Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing. Today I'm working on my Sunday's Art of Truth called Guard Your Heart. I'm using this beautiful rice paper from LTD Collection. All the supplies will be linked in the video description as well as over on my blog. So I'm using this verse from Proverbs um, 4.23 that says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. There will be a blog post associated with this piece of art, so I hope that you'll hop on over to my uh, website at bereadbornart.com and you can read that. I'll be using this beautiful uh, Crafters Workshop um, wings stencil. Um, this video I'm not actually using any of Sean Petit's stencils which is really unusual and you might notice that I'm talking a lot with my hands and that's because originally I was talking through this video as I was creating but the video became too long and so I decided I needed to do the voiceover. So um, I'll be using a variety of uh, flowers, as you can see there, some wood bits, some chipboard um, to create this kind of assemblage um, around the girl um, to go in line with the message of the piece, which is guard your heart. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to use that vine chipboard, but I did end up using it and the piece just turned out incredibly beautiful. Uh, way lighter than I normally go, but I was really pleased with it. So I hope that you'll enjoy the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and paint all of my embellishments here because I want to be able to, at this point, was thinking about embossing them um, to kind of give them a little bit of a sheen. So um, I'm going to give them a good coat of paint just because it helps even out. I've tried um, just embossing on the wood directly and depend in and as you can see I've got some chipboard and some wood bits the hearts are actually wood and so when I emboss them they they don't the colors are different and I don't like that so by giving it a coat of paint um, I can um, start out with the same base color before I emboss so there I'm just using my raw umber fluid acrylic to cover those really well I did go ahead and paint that um, vine thing um, because I was not sure if I was going to use it um, and again I did end up using it. And then I'll be setting all those aside uh, and uh, letting them dry while I work on the rest of the piece. So I did cut down the uh, rice paper. It was already not quite big enough for this canvas because it measures 12 by 16 and so I did cut off a little bit more of the edges to create a border. And originally I was thinking about using this Jean Petit stencil called Cobblestone, but I did not end up using it. Uh, I was going to just kind of put it around the piece, but then it just didn't feel like it worked uh, for this particular piece. So, And I had this rubber spatula in my stash for my jelly printing, so I decided, I've seen it on YouTube videos, so I decided to use it to apply my gel medium or my matte medium. And as I've mentioned before in other videos, it's really important to give a really generous coat of matte medium or whatever it is that you're adhering your rice paper or tissue paper to your surface so that you have the best chance at good adhesion. So as well as for tissue paper, it helps it um, to blend into the background a little bit more than if you used less. Um, and I was just showing you there with my fingers just how much matte medium there is on that surface. So now I'm going to place my rice paper evenly on the piece and um, I did have to stand up to do that because it again it's a 12 by 16 surface so it's a little bit bigger than I normally work on. So I'm using a brush and applying a coat of matte medium over the entire surface again starting from the middle and moving outward that does help you to uh, alleviate some wrinkling. I'm going to be using uh, Ranger Ultra Thick Embossing Powder. I've never used it before. It's new to me. And I'm going to, um, I just wanted to try it out. It's really chunky, as you're going to be able to see here in a moment. And I absolutely loved the effect. It created like a plastic on top of these pieces, but it had some texture to it, which I thought was really beautiful. And so here I'm trying to, struggling to find something to be able to pick those pieces up out of the embossing powder. Uh, it did later um, go through my uh, supplies and I found my little tweezers. So I put those where I'll remember and be able to use them in the future because you do, if you don't hold on to the piece while you're heat setting it, it will just blow all over the table. So here I'm using Versamark Clear e Embossing Ink to emboss these pieces and that just basically is a, a sticky ink that will cause that um, embossing powder to stick to it uh, so that you can um, heat it and um, melt it. So 
I do kind of uh, cut out some of this because um, it's redundant. It's the same process. Uh, but I did want to show you uh, from start to finish what that process looks like as well as what this looks like as it melts. It's absolutely magical. I never get tired of watching embossing powder melt um, because it's basically plastic. So it's pretty cool. And here I'm going to hold this up for you so you can see it a little bit closer. It's just like magic just to have that all that white powdery bit to turn into plastic. It's just amazing. And there's the close up. Really beautiful. And then again, I do that do do that with all of those pieces and then I'm going to set them aside and move on to the next step here in a moment. And just as an FYI, I did find out again that by talking through the video as I'm working, it helps me stay a little bit more on track and a little more cohesive in my process, which helps in my editing. So um, I was super happy to be able to do that. And, and I think it's going to be a really good idea. Um, even if I decide to voice over, it's really a good kind of structure. So I'm just setting those aside, as I mentioned before. And then I did pick some brads out of my stash. They're kind of a golden color and I wanted to put them through a couple of the holes there just to create some interest in this um, piece. This is actually a clock handle. I'm not really using it for that purpose. I really just like them. Um, it's a piece of chipboard from Creative Embellishments. So I'll be sure to link that also in the video description and on my blog. And there's just a close up of that. And then here is where I decided I wanted, I already knew I wanted to give her wings, but I just really wasn't sure about the placement because if I leave it there, it's going to, the wings are going to be over her hair and, and that wouldn't be real. So um, I'm just fussing a little bit with the placement there and um, I want it to look like they're peeking out from behind her or from the, from under her hair. So I just kind of fiddle with the stencil until I get it to a good place. So I'm just kind of talking there with my fingers, uh, of my thought process um, that I just really didn't want those wings to go behind or uh, on top of the hair. So I was thinking out loud, thinking that I would be just chatting with you. So um, there is a lot of a lot of gesturing here in this video for that reason. I'm going to use some heavy gesso to go ahead and stencil that on. Oh, I forgot. I did. I wanted to test it out. Um, so I used some really watered down um, raw umber fluid acrylic um, to kind of take a peek at this and see if the placement was right. Um, I forgot that I left that in. So and um, there you can see it. It turned out OK, but I do wipe it back because it um, they need to go farther out in my opinion so I was able to wipe most of that off I really wanted to not scrub too hard because I can actually tear that um, that rice paper so I just left the other bits there on it and then just stenciled over it again and now just getting it placed in a little bit a little bit farther out uh, which did create some new challenges in terms of where I was going to put my sentiment but um, I worked through that as you'll be able to see. Oh, I thought I had cut this out. So I did do the raw umber fluid acrylic uh, trick again, just to kind of, again, play with the placement and see if I liked that. And that was much better. And that's what I ended up going with. Um, so I'm going to wipe it off and I'm going to go ahead and use the heavy gesso to stencil those wings on. I'm just getting some of that heavy gesso out on, onto my table. I'm trying to be able to see where, where I had already put the stencil was a little bit challenging. But this piece was super fun. Um, once I have the inspiration, um, the projects go a lot better than if I'm just really kind of trying to think something up as I go or trying to work off of a really skeletal idea of um, what I want to do. So this one I had planned out well in terms of all the 
um, elements I wanted to use, the color scheme that I wanted to stick to, and those kinds of things. So it re went really smoothly. I think in total this video was about an hour and 30 minutes in the making, and, but I just did feel like that was too long for, uh, for a YouTube video. So that's why I'm doing the voiceover. And I'm just going to pull that off and I loved the placement. I do come in, I still have a little bit more there on her hair that I didn't like. Um, that squiggly kind of S-shaped piece of it, I did end up wiping off. I tried a brush and then came in with a baby wipe to just get rid of that. I felt like it was a little bit too, uh, too stark there, so it was too defined. And I, I loved it once I got that off. And then I'll be doing um, uh, the wing on the... Um, behind this one. Um, even though uh, in the end I did get the angle a little bit wrong, um, it turned out really beautiful. I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of difficulty with proportion and perspective, so um, which in art and sometimes in life, <laughs> unfortunately. So um, I just loved this this girl. I just she just looked like an angel to me, so I needed to make her into an angel. <laughs> So, um, and so there I, again, I'm thinking through the placement of that wing, um, trying to figure out what the perspective needed to be. Um, and so this is where I landed. Um, but I believe that it, it really should have been tipped up a little bit further, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not the expert with that, but in looking at it later, um, it looked a little bit off, but it was just fine for me. So, and this piece will be on sale in my Etsy shop. Once the video posts, um, you can check it out on my Etsy store. Um, that link will also be in the blog. And so, yeah, I liked it. I did get a little bit of that um, gesso there on her hair, so I wiped that off as well. Really loved how that turned out. I'm going to definitely need to use that technique again. Um, in terms of having kind of that stenciling peek out from behind something else because I thought it was gorgeous. So I did make sure that was nice and dry. And there, there I'm just thinking through after the fact the, the angle of that, that top wing, but it's all right. And here I thought that I would, I was still thinking about doing the, um, the, the cobblestone stencil and then thinking about where I was going to put my sentiment. And so I did just scrap the idea of using uh, the Jean Petit stencil. So. I just think that the margin was not quite big enough to, to be able to really have that be a, a good look. So, And I'm going to be using a variety of um, deco art acrylic paints. Um, the one in my hand there is Hosser Green, Hosser Light Green, or Green Light, excuse me. And that again is a deco art product. And I am mixing it with a little bit of raw umber just to kind of dirty it up a little bit. Um, here you can see just a little sliver on the right hand side of the screen. It gets a little bit too um, dark and so I add a little bit more of the of the green paint. And I'm just going to be using my finger to apply this paint and I'll also be using blush pink and warm beige which are the colors in the background but I really felt like um, some of the background needed a little bit of color. Uh, it looks a little bit dull so that's what I'm doing there. And I really liked the fact it the effect it was really subtle. And I do dr dry between each of these layers. Once the green is done, I dry the piece and then come in with the uh, blush pink and then dry it and come in with the warm beige. But I really loved the little green tint on this. I thought it was a really good element and really I think it helped the girl to pop off the page a little bit more. I thought about um, adding some color to her hair and, and such, but I, I didn't like, I tried some soft pastel and I didn't like it. So I ended up just washing it off. Um, I did not keep that in the video um, because I wanted to keep it short, um, short and sweet. Um, but the soft pastels are great for that because you can actually just, if you don't like it, you can wipe it off, which is really, really nice. So again, I did dry that after the green paint and I'm gonna come in with the blush pink trying to keep everything in screen here. Um, again, the canvas is fairly large, so I had some challenges. I really liked the pink element here because um, even though the flowers are mostly kind of a peachy color, there was some pink in this one, uh, this one bunch on the lower left-hand corner. 
So I wanted to be able to draw that color out into other places on the, um, on the canvas or the panel, excuse me. This is a wood panel. Um, it's called a gesso board, I believe. And I get them from Joanne Fabrics. I don't buy them regular price because they are expensive. This one is uh, $15. So I always get them when they're 50% off. Uh, you can either get them in the store or you can get them online. And I have put that link in the video description as well. And then just again, just finishing up with that blush pink. And as you can see, sometimes you get it where, you know, try it in one place and it doesn't quite have the look. So you can just wipe it up because this entire surface prior to applying this acrylic paint is covered with matte medium. And so it does allow you um, time to be able to wipe up things that you don't like uh, to some degree. Now, if you used a really bold paint or a really staining color, um, you would not have the same uh, uh, ability. So. And then the last color I'm going to do is the um, the warm beige, and I didn't hadn't shaken that good enough, so I had to close that up and shake it again. I didn't use as much of the warm beige as I did the other colors colors, but I think it was just enough of an element there to bring out that color out of the flowers and into the background. And I'll be using my charcoal pencil to accentuate kind of the cracks where I'm pointing there uh, on the left, right hand side um, to accentuate those cracks or what looks like cracks in the wall there. Uh, I really liked the look on this paper for that for that reason, in addition to how beautiful this girl is. She's just gorgeous, so sweet and so innocent, which again is is the uh, part of the message of the piece. So I hope that you'll check out the blog. I've been writing blogs for a couple years now, um, which I call my Sunday's Art of Truth because I create an art piece. Uh, well, now, most lately, I create an art piece that goes along with the blog writing. Uh, in the, my earlier days, I didn't have a piece of art. I just had kind of a photo or uh, an old piece of art or something. So, and here I'm gonna go, I, I wanted to um, kind of dirty up those wings. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a glaze with my raw umber fluid acrylic and my golden glazing medium. And um, this was a little rough because it didn't really have the effect I wanted. I mean, I guess it did in that it did colorize the wings a little bit, but I did end up um, later on in the video needing to just come in and paint raw umber directly on the wings um, kind of straight up. But I wanted to leave this in so that you could see what the process looked like and what the results were. It just wasn't quite as, uh, it didn't have enough of an effect for me um, to just kind of leave it as is. So I am being sure to just only apply the glaze here on the wings and just in the immediate area around them. And they're just kind of skipping ahead just a little bit because it was a really kind of a long process there. And not wanting to leave some some of the unnecessary stuff although I did want to leave some of the um, the mistakes I guess I would call them not mistakes but the things that didn't weren't working out quite the way I had intended and kind of what I do to fix that so I'm just gonna let that part dry and move on to uh, assemble my uh, flowers and my other elements so and then I'll come back to the wings in a little bit and so there I'm just going to um, go ahead and put all these pieces in place. I did take a picture, which is why my phone is on um, to the left there on the bottom, because I wanted to be able to look at the photo and see where I had originally placed all of these items. And then off camera, I will be using my uh, Liquitex Heavy Gel to go ahead and adhere those onto the piece, um, both this area with the flowers and that beautiful um, clock handle as well as the vines that will go on the upper left hand corner and then the hearts that go around her face. And then that just the last bits of the wood, uh, these kind of vine, vine looking leaves. Really beautiful. I get all of my um, chipboard from Creative Embellishments. They're, they are just absolutely amazing, high quality uh, chipboard if you want to check them out. And then just placing those around her face and did have to adjust them just a little bit. Um, but I really, there's a point to having them there by her face. So I'll be writing about that in the video or in the blog post as well. And I, made, I um, printed my sentiment out on a piece of tissue paper, so I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that 
to the lower right hand corner there, um, kind of a little bit overlapping those flowers. And again, um, as I mentioned before, it's really important to use a generous amount of the matte medium and being super careful with the brush strokes because you can easily tear that rice paper. So there you can tell it looks kind of opaque and not really blending in very well. But once it started drying and then I further dried it with my heat tool, it did blend in beautifully. Uh, still a little bit of lines there, but I did um, finesse that a little bit. So. And they're just, again, I was talking as I was doing this. So this is the part where I'm going to go ahead and um, I, I pause the camera and go ahead and adhere all those pieces onto the, uh, onto the uh, panel. It did take me a little bit of time because I had to use that small brush to get the, the glue boogers out. And so I didn't have a bunch of, of glue oozing out underneath and in between those pieces. So it did take me a good deal of time to do that. I was being super careful. And then I place some um, bottles of mediums and things on different parts to help them kind of set into the surface uh, a little bit quicker. So here I'm coming in with the uh, raw umber fluid acrylic, as I mentioned, and just painting each of those uh, parts of the wings. I felt like that was the best answer in this case because I really wanted them to be uh, more, um, I wanted them to stand out a little bit more than they were just with a little bit of that color, that dirty color. And then I come in right after I'm done here with a baby wipe and wipe some of that um, that raw umber off. Um, not quite yet, so I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit um, because I am also going to use some golden fluid acrylic in iridescent gold fine um, and apply that just in bits in bits and pieces uh, around the leaves there, around the leaves, <laughs> the wings, excuse me. So here is where I'm going to wipe it back with a little baby wipe. And I did kind of use my fingernail a little bit underneath that wipe to kind of scrape it a little bit to get a little bit more of the paint off because the top part was obviously drier than the bottom part by this time. And so I had a little bit more trouble getting the paint off the top, but it worked out in the end, just a little bit more scrubbing, but it made it, um, it made them look a little bit softer, which I think they needed. They were pretty bold being that really dark brown. And once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and come in with the uh, Golden Fluid Acrylic in uh, Iridescent Gold Fine. Uh, just to create a little bit of a gold highlight. I didn't want a lot of gold. Um, so I do apply it and then come back in with a little bit of raw umber in places where it felt a little bit too bold I'm using that tiny brush just because I'm working in tiny little wing bits here. So uh, I really liked the end product here um, and the charcoal, applying the charcoal pencil at the end did also help with this process because it got the darks into all of the crevices around all those wing parts. So uh, you'll have to check out the, the uh, still photos at the end to see what that looks like and, and what the benefit is of doing that shading there. I did, I uh, was just talking there about um, painting the, the that edge that is around the piece as well as the sides. So I did that off camera. And there, there it is finished. I really love how that raw umber framed the piece. I thought it was a great addition to the project and was really happy with it. Not sure what I was talking about there. Um, so here I'm using my charcoal pencil, as I mentioned before, to kind of come in and accentuate those lines that are already a part of the rice paper, just to kind of make those cracks uh, stand out just a little bit more. I do go around a little bit of the flowers uh, and a little bit around her face and her neck um, to kind of make that um, stand out a little bit more from the background and look a little bit more three-dimensional. So I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that you'll hop on over to my blog at bereborn.art.com and check out the blog post. This piece will also be available in my Etsy shop. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, I would sure love to have you join me here so that I can share more tips and techniques and art pieces with you so you can be inspired to create um, on your own and figure out what your own style is. So thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.